Today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. All right, and welcome back to Bayou Time. I'm Martin Foss. Always pleased to have with us the superintendent of Lafouche Paris, Mr. Jared Morton. Jared, good to see you again. How are you, sir? Thank you, Mr. Foss. Very good. All right. So, hey, people in Lafouche, probably a, a little excited whenever somebody's going to get a little extra pay or a stipend, like y'all uh, call it. I guess that means for smiles during the day. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about it and uh, why you thought it was a necessary thing to sort of sweeten the pot a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is coming from the ESSER funds that we received from the federal government some, you know, what is it, three years now that we've yeah. been uh, putting this money to good use. We've used this money to fund Chromebook computers, mm -hmm. extra training for teachers, hand sanitizer, soap, the um, microbial spray to kill and disinfect in classrooms. We've, we've put this money to good use. Mm -hmm. um, we've also funded our summer school program over the last three years where we bused kids to school, fed them a meal, and had them throughout the year for extended learning to make up for some of that that lost time for instruction. Um, but we still had some money left over um, that, that, that we had not spent yet. And right now, the biggest challenge for the Lafourche Parish School District, probably every school district in Louisiana, every school district in the nation, is recruiting and retaining high-quality employees across the board. Yeah. Um, certainly our teachers, which is what we're obviously most known for as being an educational service institution. Um, but we're struggling right now to get employees of all ranks, whether it's cafeteria workers, custodians, or, or clerical staff. Um, and so we felt like this remaining money needed to go to that, that really toughest thing to conquer in a post-COVID world, which is employment. Um, so we are going to give. Um, the board agreed and, and approved unanimously, uh, I believe last week, um, for a $3,000 stipend to our certificated folks and a $1,500 stipend to the support staff. Um, and those certificated folks are, of course, our teachers, our school psychiatrists, our school psychologists, I should say, uh, school counselors, all those folks that uh, typically have a degree in some field and are an expert in their craft. And the support folks are going to be the uh, the clerical staff, the custodians, the, the bus drivers, uh, all extremely valuable parts of our team. And, and we need them very much right now. And so in a place and a time when districts are competing for employees, we felt it was really important to uh, to reward those folks that are still with us and, and reward the folks that return in the fall. And yeah. you can see the second half of this, uh, which is uh, a similar stipend to be paid out in September, which is instead of 3,000, 2,500, and instead of 1,500, um, 1,250. Mm -hmm. it it's it's a unique situation you're in because your dad, of course, spent many years in the school system. On the tail end of his career, he started probably feeling what y'all feel every day. And it's a unique position because every parent, there's not one parent in this viewing audience who would be watching this that says, I don't want my child to have a great education. That's right. But then it always comes to, giving raises and on people think twice, but if there was ever an industry that needed more funds to keep them teaching our kids, it would be the educational industry. Do you find more and more parents are, are starting to catch on to that? Absolutely. Um, I think that what you, what you said is exactly correct regarding, um, what parents want for their kids. They, everyone knows the value of a high caliber teacher. Um, and many times people in the community, um, they, they recognize that. Um, the challenge that we have right now is recruiting those folks that could be phenomenal teachers later as adults, 
while they're in a university setting to go into public education um, for a couple of reasons. One, they've seen firsthand how difficult the job is having been in the classroom. Uh, and two, our compensation just hasn't kept up with private industry around us. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there, is a, there was a time when teachers in the public school setting many times made more than their private industry counterparts right after college. Uh, those days are no longer true. Mm-hmm. And our teachers, our teacher salaries haven't kept up. This may be a crazy out of bounds question, but a lot of teachers who retired, I run into people all the time that retire and say, I want to go back to work. Yeah. Does any retired teachers come up to you and say, I want to go back to work, and is that possible? <laughs> do y'all bring them back in? How do y'all handle uh, that? I'm, I'm laughing because every retired teacher I encounter, I attempt to talk them back into <laughs> into coming back to work. Amen um, for you. Yeah. But, but the answer is no, they yeah. don't all want to come back. Um, yeah. The vast majority retired for, for I'll say good reason, but a yeah. reason. Um, they put in their time. Uh, of course. Yeah. And, and look, teaching is not something that can be done half-heartedly. It is a really difficult and demanding job, as you well know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I've been in many teacher interviews where the assistant principal sitting in the room with me or whoever was conducting the interview with me thought that I was trying to talk the person out of a job because I was describing to them what the job entailed. And, and I would start with, if you think that from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. is hard, know that I expect more from you from 3 p.m. until 8 a.m. because that's when the real work of a teacher happens. It's not when the kids are with you. It's what you're preparing to do when they arrive. And you were just being honest. I mean, that's right. honesty seems sometimes to have, uh, <laughs> have lost its grip. Let's do this. Let's take a short break. We'll talk more about the stipend. We'll talk more just in general about the school system. It's all next as we continue our conversation with Mr. Jared Martin. social media segment is brought to you by South Louisiana Bank. It's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough. All right, we are back here on Bayou Time with Mr. Jared Morton, the superintendent of Lafouche Parish Schools. We're talking about a stipend uh, that they're going to be distributing and some other things. There's legislative processes going on right now that involve the school system. Before we start, I just got to say, my mom worked at St. Francis for 30 years. I had two sisters and a brother in the school system. And there's a lot of people, I, I always hear the argument. Well, they only work till three, and then they don't work the summer. And I always say, hold on. That three o'clock, like you said, they got to go home, grade papers, do all kind of things. And even if they had the summer off, if you had the hours that they spent during the school year, it far surpasses that. But a lot of times they're going back, getting their classes ready and doing other things. So it's a devotion they have. If you could measure devotion in the heart, then We'd pay them all 100000 a year. But for some reason, that's the argument that I always hear, and it's the wrong argument. Yeah, 100%. Um, I, I would challenge anybody that has that opinion about the life of an educator to come come spend a couple of weeks in the shoes of a teacher. Uh, and I, I tell people all the time, look, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to serve my country. I served as an infantry officer. I served mm-hmm. um, in a combat theater for, for um, gosh, I guess all told, two and a half years. And the hardest job of my life is not being an infantry officer in a combat zone. It was absolutely being a seventh grade American history teacher at Homer Junior High School. Not yeah. because I was in danger, not because I felt threatened at all, but because the workload was just tremendous. And this is coming from somebody who's used to working 20 hours a day. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a stress that you put on yourself because you want the best for your kids. And the lesson plan is never perfect. The feedback you give each individual kid is never enough. And 
teaching done right is just a really challenging job. Mm -hmm. Have we lost a little bit, Mr. Martin? I, I guess my point is, I remember the days when the drill sergeant mentality worked in school. I mean, if you got reprimanded at school, the last thing you want to do is go home and let your parents know that you did. But it's changed and it's it's softened up quite a bit. Does that make it harder for y'all to, to govern a school? You know, you would think that. Yeah. And, and I think that most people would assume that, but it's actually quite the opposite. We, we have done such a better job of providing children with the um, adequate space, climate, and, and opportunity su to succeed mm -hmm. that, that we have now presented school in a much more effective way of making kids want to perform and behave the way that you expect them to. Um, the state was brilliant in launching um, what we call PBIS, the mm -hmm. Positive Behavior Supports and Interventions. Um, and the way that we approach children now is completely different, as, as frankly it should be. Um, I will tell you that when we were younger, uh, what you described was accurate, but there are a lot of folks who, when met with that resistance, didn't navigate the the school setting well and became dropouts as a result of it. Um, our school settings now are such that we approach children with respect, we create environments that people want to be a part of, and rather than only acknowledge the bad, we reward the good. And, and I'm really proud of that work. And I think if you could uh, come and take a tour of our campuses, you would see why it's challenging. It's, um, it's certainly not without its hurdles, um, but it's just a better environment. And I have been to a couple of schools in Lafourche, and you're right. I have been impressed. It is a different dynamic, but, and I guess too, now that you convinced me that that might be a good thing, because I'm so used to the old school, it, it also gives the student a chance to sort of breathe on their own. Maybe they're getting the drill sergeant at home. It gives them a chance to grow at the school. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. And that, that's the that's the the goal. And th there's a lot of research that talks about how we learn and when we learn and certainly under stress, under pressure and feeling as though there's these external forces being pressed upon you. Those are the exact opposite from environments with which we learn best. Well, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that the legislature now is proposing a few things that, that might affect you all. Maybe you could comment on a couple of. Yeah, and you know, the most pressing legislation, I believe, as it relates to public education this year um, are ESA's education savings accounts. Um, in the immediate future, um, they probably are not going to directly compete with rank and file public schools, um, but over the course of their life, and as it is written now, um, superintendents across Louisiana are very concerned about these ESAs, as they're called, um, because they, in our opinion, pose a direct threat to public education as it stands today and really stand to potentially dismantle public education across Louisiana. I don't think I'm being an alarmist by saying mm -hmm. that. And the two areas that we're concerned with these bills are both funding and accountability. Um, there is a lack of funding that's been identified as a means by which to support this endeavor. And the schools that will be receiving these state dollars don't have the same accountability that we do. And, and there's a lot to be said about both of those things. And I'd love to, to expand on both of those with you mm -hmm. um, because they, they do potentially present direct challenges to public education. And I think a lot of Louisiana families are, are being misinformed about well, let's what do they this. Let's, let's add a segment. We can do that. And I will take a break. And Dwayne wanted me to have three segments anyway on the school system. So this will give us a good opportunity. We'll give Mr. Martin a chance to elaborate on this legislative process. And we'll take a short break. We'll be right back with the superintendent of Lafouche Parish Schools. Don't go away. Yeah. social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. C 
CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. All right, we are back talking with the superintendent of Lafouche Parish Schools, Mr. Jared Morton. And Mr. Morton, I, I know we've heard this in the past where uh, private sector students want to sort of get their stipend, for lack of a better word, or tuition That's right. paid by the state in order for them, if they want to choose to go from public to private, can get that done. A, a lot of local legislators have signed on. I think the governor's one of his agenda yes, sir. items or whatever. But you as a superintendent and other superintendents are in disagreement with that. Let me give you an opportunity to maybe talk about why and maybe educate the public on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I will tell you that when asked the question, am I in favor of school choice? I am in favor of school choice. And I think that parents should be a part of that process. Um, but how we provide that choice and those opportunities, it, it matters greatly. Um, this really comes down to a, a couple of issues. Are we gonna support public education um, as a state is probably the first question that I would ask. And in the last 20 years, I would say that the answer to that is no. Um, in the last 20 years, the Louisiana legislature has not increased through inflation or just even small measures, what we call the MFP formula, except for twice. Um, had the MFP funding, which is how the state funds public education in our local schools, kept up with inflation, Lafouche Parish Schools, in a, as an example, would have an extra $1,200 per student, which amounts to something close to $17 million a year in our budget that could go directly towards things like teacher salaries and keeping highly qualified teachers in the classroom. Since the early days of Bobby Jindal, the state has not funded public education. It has held steady the actual dollar amount that we receive from the state. And as you know, the price of milk, the price of bread, the price of gasoline, the price of school buses has gone up tremendously in that time. And the state's funding of public education has not kept up with inflation at all. So that's on the funding front. Um, this bill in its form in three years will give $5,000 of the state's money to any private school student, regardless of if they've ever participated in the public school sector. There's 115,000 students in Louisiana today in private schools. In its current form, that would mean that this bill would cost the Louisiana taxpayers, it would cost Louisiana's government $500 million annually. And so it frustrates someone who depends on the state to fund the service that we provide when you have not kept the funding for public education, at least um, with what inflation has done over the past 20 years. But we have now found an opportunity to have 500 million extra dollars annually. Uh, you will ask our local delegation, they will tell you we're facing a $465 million fiscal cliff because of the expiring sales tax soon, yet we now have an extra $500 million for what has now become one of the governor's pet projects. And I don't think that it's a reasonable expectation to think that Louisiana can come up with that money. And that's just in the funding. Have front. you reached out to some of the local legislators, maybe I, the governor? I have, and they are also um, concerned about the fiscal note. Um, mm. They have not yet identified a funding source that would wholly make this thing come to fruition, um, but I'm asking why are we passing a bill to put something in place mm -hmm. before we've identified even how this could get paid so for. So in your opinion and other superintendents' opinions, it would be the state robbing Peter to pay Paul? 100%. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. And that's half of the um, concern we have regarding this legislation. The other half is the lack of accountability. Um, in a public school setting, our kids are going to be taking state tests starting in kindergarten and all the way through the 11th grade. Our state tests in the high school setting determine whether or not a kid can graduate and walk across the stage. Our teacher evaluations are dependent 50% on how their students perform on these state tests, and the schools are given letter grades based on how the schools 
students perform on those state tests. Under this plan, a receiving private school would have to do none of that. The teacher's evaluations are not dependent on the state assessment. In fact, the school doesn't have to give the state so assessment. So the standards are different, but both funded by the same source. Exactly. Any middle ground? Not yet. We offered amendments mm -hmm. to the proposed bill that would simply put the accountability piece in place and require any private school or any private institution who receives this public money to teach Louisiana's standards and give Louisiana's tests. They refused to amend the bill and it passed in its original form. Yeah, I, I get your point. I'm all about seeing people choosing their schools, but if the money's funded, the taxpayers' money and the standards are different, that's probably a big roadblock. I'm, I'm hoping maybe two sides can get together and work out some amendments like you talk about and see if there's a feasible solution. Uh, are you hopeful? Uh, extremely. You, you know, there's always hope, and we continue to have a good relationship with our local legislative delegation. Uh, we continue to push what we think is right for kids. And if we're going to live, if we're going to live in a in a place where the money follows the child, then accountability should follow the money. And and without that level of accountability, I don't know how Louisiana parents or Louisiana taxpayers can know that their tax dollars are going to support education the way that they've been promised. Keep us posted on your efforts to get that through. You sort of put a light bulb off in me. I'm going to follow that more closely, but keep a, keep us posted and we'll, we'll continue to report on that. Absolutely. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Once again, Mr. Jared Martin, the superintendent of Lafouche Parish Schools, and we appreciate him being here. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we have a lot more. So don't go away.